All right, guys, what is up? It is Gnomes. I'm here in a game between Reaper and Phoenix. We're going to have Reaper here on the, looks like the bottom hand side. He will be the one playing, could be witches. This could be a witch battle group. We do have this uh, witch and this is a witch, right? Um, and then on the top hand side, it looks like we do have liches. So liches versus witches, a bit hard to say. Um, lich, you basically you know that for sure just we have the, i mean you have the lichling you have the high warlock which is a lich and then you have the lich servitor or servitor servitor i don't know uh who has the aspiring servant and then let's see worship lich which then gives your others you know the regen i don't actually like the servitor for their worship just because you have one champion that's specifically made for it that has this and one other ability and i don't know if you really want one of your melee champions to be a mobile right like i don't know if that's really that good of an idea um but i do like the champion with the aspiring servant like it's not bad to have aspiring servant and stuff but on the other hand uh i'm not sure i like the the um worship blitz on him so a bit suboptimal in my opinion but i guess we'll see um yeah it is fw versus fw so it could be a pretty long game but i think the fw nowadays isn't actually that slow right like back in the day um, FW was a very slow battle group where you had very little damage and you had to chip away. But nowadays, like FW had to adapt because, you know, just how the. I mean, you wouldn't even say nowadays anymore, but like the battle group size means that often you have your champions back on the board by the time your last one dies, right? So FW is played a bit differently now. They don't play as much attrition where they kind of wear you down and make themselves bigger. But instead, they have a lot of little tricks. Um, ooh, is he gonna, okay, he's going to go in with the Servitor. So, But yeah, FW has a lot of little tricks. They have some efficient, you know, synergies. Um, but their their theme... Uh, what was that? The War Banner. He should have done that first before he hits, right? For the extra damage. But the, um, the cooldown on your champions nowadays is only really advantageous in that it means you can play a lot of 1Xs, right? You can play a lot of 1X of your champions because you know you're going to get it back if it dies very quickly. And what that does is it means that um, you have then a very high var variability in champions that you can play as well as in spells and relics. So whereas most, most battle groups play, let's say, you know, between, I would say, 17, 18, 19 champions. Between, I would say the average is between uh, 16 and 18 champions that you want to play in a battle group. Um, whereas FW can play 15, maybe even 14, right, of just very good champions, and then they can have a very diverse set or, you know, of, of relics, equipment, and spells, right? So that can be kind of cool. Or they can play just very diverse champions, have just one X of everything, just because everything does come off cooldown very quickly. You don't have to be afraid of that. So, um, and even when, if you weren't to take that into account, so that kind of change in, in style, you also just have some very good abilities and spells in FW that not many factions have, um, you know, a way to have so they don't have they don't have access to it so for example they have that loss of life uh they have you know essence strain they have you know mobilization and they're very just they have a lot of ap they have good shatter options they're just very versatile battle group the fw now let's see the fight has kind of started so i'm going to start talking about the game um it does look so far that we have this look at this nine hp already on this chroma visionary he's just getting wailed away by this high warlock right now um and there's no champion. That's one thing that FW doesn't really have a lot of is healing. It kind of depends. Like, at meta FW, I don't know. I think there are some themes in FW that have some okay healing. Because you have, like, heal mass. Like, zombies have some healing. Like, heal mass, right? But they don't have the best healing in the in the game. They're okay. Uh, for, when, if you compare FW like in the role of like uh, healing when it comes to uh, wrath, then I would say the worst is SL by far. SL has no healing whatsoever. Like, they only have regen. Like they have a very <laughs> they're very by far the worst healing is SL. Um, rightly so though, right? Um, and then after that, I think it's tied between SP and ud even though i would say sp is better the only reason that ud has some good healing is if you play bleed right if you play the fountain then you can get healed for a lot in one turn 
But other than the fountain, UD actually has no healing as well. And then SP has actually some very good healing. So I would say healing is the SP is the best, and then S F W, and then U D, and then S L. Um, and S B obviously just because of Staff of Solstice, and then Mika and um, the Voil. So S B actually has lots of really good healing. Uh, let's see, he's at six HP on this Visionary. Like he, the main thing. It's a little bit like in um, it moves in with a Coven Claw, a bit like an SP. Uh, actually, it's very similar in every deck, but especially for the uh, Wrath factions, I think you really want to get the Nora Globe. And here, when your champion's gonna die soon, and you can get it back soon anyway, so you don't really care about the cooldown on it. You really just want the Nora, right? So you care very much about getting the Nora Globe. So I wonder if you can somehow save it from being taken by this lichling that's my question here so he will have the he revel revel in misery that gives him three healing so this is in all with these witches he's gonna heal for three three or no three four so it's seven already seven and then another four okay so 11 healing in all he does not have a double tap with the golden lamia though but look 17 health he was at six and now he's at 17 right so a good amount of healing 11 health gained there um and now he is in the the high warlock can attack him once but not for that much damage because of the cursed and this literally can't attack right one two three so there is a ability or a, a relic sorry that gives the liches one range and that would then allow the lichling to attack once as well as him but he can attack so nine plus 11 would be a kill right so yeah the the servitor as well as the high warlock could both attack this Visionary once and the visionary would be dead. Ooh, there's the um, Glorious Death Pact, or just Death Pact, putting 28 health on this Coven Claw now. He can double tap with the Servitor possibly, but again, I don't know if he wants to maybe kill the the visionary instead. But, but he did use the death, death Pact here, so I guess not. He has Void Shields on Coven Claw. I, I don't know, Coven Claw is a tank, right? kind of meant to die i'm not sure if you want to try to kill it then but it's okay all right now he's gonna yeah he's gonna go for the visionary now just gonna use the uh the death pack for fun but yeah he's gonna get the nor globe exactly so he gets the kill and the nor globe now the servitor is at 28 health this is at eight and this is at 26 so these are all quite low actually um the high warlock will die and will give the nor globe over to the coven claw and it actually the essence claw will go out right Oh shit! So he'll get a essence claw to go off, which will then give him a champion. So that actually might have been an idea on why you want to kill the Coven Claw early, is just so that she's not able to get this ability off, right? This gives you an extra summon, basically. It's really just a, a very cheap summon with twelve HP, and and uh, I believe. I don't, oh, it actually uses the uses the drain there in order to prevent the essence claw. Kind of a good move, right? And there's the. Uh, the curse as well on him now exertion was used last and already but he can double tap the lichling if he wants for quite a bit of damage and he might be able to i mean yeah he can kill this lichling but then the golden lamia is not in the best place right who's he gonna go for here all right hits this one as well once and then he's gonna go for this kill let's see that's 17 look at this healing though four and then what five now yeah, 4-4 four, four, actually. I think it's max at 4, isn't it? No, it's not. Oh, interesting. So there's that kill. And he gets this Lichling, who actually comes out with the initiative. That's pretty insane. It comes out with the initiative. Huh, that's cool. So he uses the Essence Claw. Gets the initiative champion. Now he can just attack the uh, Zulos once. And look at this champion, back at full health. He, he was at like half, and now he's at full health here. So very scary. And Exertion will be up next turn as well. So he can just run away, double tap again. And now the Zulos is under under target, uh, under fire from the Lichling, right? And then the uh, Coven Claw. And these guys are all going to become cursed if they want to move into here. So this is actually not going badly for Reaper. Like, it was looking a bit bad for him, but I think Phoenix might have messed up just a tiny bit. I'm not sure. He got the kill there, but then he half killed. I don't know. Like, they both cursed. And they're attacking a champion that will heal, right? Just because of that Revel in the Misery. 
But you don't want to attack this tank either. It's just very hard. Ooh, this is a nice play. Polluted Martyr will just insta-kill the Lichling, right? Yeah, it kills the Lichling. No Norglobe going to be given over, but... And the Zulos is actually not in range to attack the Golden Lamia. So good positioning on the Golden Lamia not to be able to be attacked here. Um, you can only attack the Coven Claw. But next turn, the Lichling will be dead. And like I said, we can see the Exertion go off again. Banner boost? I'm a little confused. Who? Uh, I guess the um, the summon that came out, so the, the Essence Claw summon that came out didn't get the banner HP. So that was kind of weird. That shouldn't have been that way, I'm guessing. All right, so he's going to attack him. Again, they both heal for three. This Revel in the Misery can be pretty insane when it comes to healing. He is splitting up his damage, but he will get a kill on this Lichling now. He can double tap here just to get the kill. And now doing it this way also makes it so that he can disengage more cheaply, right? So instead of 4 AP, it's going to be 3 now. He gets the Normal Globe, and now he can retreat and use Exertion. He could have actually moved differently, but he didn't. He could have maybe double tapped if he had moved, because he's flying, right? I guess next turn it would have been gone though. So he attacks once, boom, heals for four again. Look at this healing that's been going off, pretty crazy. And this Lich Slurvature can now, I mean, it it will come back as the as the um, servant, right? But on the other hand, look at this this board coming out. Like witches, when they start rolling, you have this fifteen damage Lamia in the back. You have this champion with the uh, shroud. You have the long range champion that provides the shade strike. Um. And they all just healing a lot, right? You have the, the Witch's Hourglass, you have the Witching Hour, so it can be quite scary and hard to deal with. But yeah, this Servitor dying isn't doesn't matter too much, right? Because if it dies, it's just gonna... You're just gonna get another champion. And there's the Drain again. Not a bad play. Might as well, because he's, like, he's dying anyway. He's blinded, he can't do anything, so he might as well. Just the only... I guess he, I don't know if he drops a Norglobe. I don't think he does, actually. But... Was that a Despoil? It was. Cast Despoil. I don't know where it's played, though. It's just, where's the Despoil played? I don't know. Right, this is another one over here. Just because, I mean, obviously the uh, witches really want Despoil for the Cursed because of the uh, the whole Elisari Coven idea. So the Servitor will die. So there's that. And he's going for this uh, Polluted Martyr as well. But now there's no more Witching Hour, so they're not healing anymore with the Revel and the Misery. I mean, you could play an Hourglass here. Hourglass gives Forsaken Exploit, so that would give you the extra damage, right? The extra 2 damage and the AP. You gain 1 AP if you attack a, a blind... Or sorry, a... Uh, a... Um, curse Champion. So it looks like he's going to go for this Polluted Martyr. What is this? What the hell is that? Sturge Hextall, okay. What does this give? Witch, Priest, Hex 2, Curse 2, and Shielded. All right. I mean, you don't really need Shielded on the Ink Blight just because he does have that dead magic zone. Um, it did really, it did leave him Norglobe, though. I mean, you don't really need Shielded on the Ink Blight. And then Curse and Hex, I'm not sure that's really worth it. But it gives you, I guess, a lot of range attacks. And now, look at this Polluted Martyr now. Four, four damage because it was Hexed, so, and the Curse. But look at this Lich Knight, pretty pretty good. Five defense with that empowered defense. All right, so now we have another Death Pact. Puts him at 18 health, and we see another four damage, and that's it, though. Yeah, you're not really going to do anything here. And attacking, oh, he also has the resistance against the disease damage type. And now, like, if we see another Witching Hour, if we see Witcher's Hourglass, we could see a double kill here on both the Zulos as well as the Blood Martyrs. So I don't know. I think that it's it's time to probably surrender here. I mean, he hasn't deployed in a while. It's five versus three. This champion's uh, short-lived anyway, and he's dead next turn. Zulos is very low and at five damage. Like, the Curse is doing some pretty good work here, too. Like, ten turn for Cursed. All 
I mean, the, the Grace of the Dead doesn't really matter. I don't like Grace of the Dead just because you don't really want the champion to die um, ever because it's like it's a hero right like it has death pact it has drain it's a good it has the, i don't know it's a good champion like i don't know you, you're fine with him dying just because this is a very good ability and if you get it back within five turns with the fw bonus you're happy but on the other hand it's just a good champion to have alive as well so it's weird to want it dead and want it alive at the same time all right plays the toll taker this is actually a lich as well oh wow it's a very good champion with tariff corruption soul collection forage this like combo is really cool all right, so let's see. Will we see another Witch's Hourglass for the heals? I wonder. Or, yeah, there's the Witch's Hourglass. Or, sorry, the Witching Hour, right? Witching Hour being played. They also get speed. Wow, yeah, they get one speed as well. So one speed. Oh, he's taking damage, actually, because he's uh, decaying from the rotting blows here on the Polluted Martyr. So, yeah. The Coven Claw actually getting hurt here from that. And not getting the normal globe either um but i mean he has a very strong hold on this middle fawn now like we have this ink blight witch with shroud here he can start moving top with the coven claw soon the you know this wailing banshee is very hard to kill and it has the uh fascinate the you know it's evasive so and and he had, he played the uh, grabby hands so they can't even get to the fawn he can move one space yeah he goes back once that's it grab your hands just blocking off the area saying you're not you're not moving in here he can deploy top maybe i mean he has to against this coven glide at eight speed right now with the plus one he actually plays a polluted martyr i guess yeah to get into the font yeah he plays to get in the font but like i said this this uh coven claw is just gonna move top next turn and he's not he's not diseased anymore and what this kind of gives him this gives reaper just a champion to to smack to get the revel off right or just play a spell and get the kill all right there's a heal though there's a heal the heal from the grace of the dead he can still move top with the coven claw actually and look at this healing though he goes from <laughs> heals for eight yeah okay there's the gg so that was a good game, um, yeah. But the witch is the, that efficiency of just smacking, smacking, and like he healed in that game for so much. I think he must. It just, I think that kind of like matchup kind of favors FW witches in a way, because witches generally have a pretty slow fight, right? And they want a slow, like drawn out fight. That's what witches want because of the um, the whole revel in the misery, right? You want to get your champion that like half health. And then just heal away by like hitting everything, and then all of a sudden all your champions are back at like full, right? And the liches, they don't, they, I mean, unless you have like the midterm, they're not insanely strong, right? You need the midterm to be really good, and their damage isn't super like hardcore. Like, they, unless you have like an essence drain, it's kind of hard for liches to one shot, and that's what you really need to do against witches. So that kind of did favor the witches' battle group, but I think they're gonna have a, a rematch. So we'll see. GG.